I'd like to welcome everyone to the July 21st meeting of the Newmarket Town Council, and we will start, as always, with the Pledge of Allegiance. First item that we have is public forum, and is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak this evening? We just opened up public forum, so if there's anyone from the public who wishes to speak? Okay, then I will close public forum. The next item that we have is um, uh, the acceptance of minutes, and we have one item and that's June 16th 2021 and I would accept a motion to approve those minutes. I will make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes from the June 16th 2021 meeting. I'll second. Thank you. Any questions, comments, changes? Seeing none, if you could call the roll please. Thank you. Uh, and so next we have the town manager's report. And is there anything that you want to? Uh, well, I can read it. That'd be perfect. Entirety, or <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, OK, so the, the first off, we'll talk about the COVID-19 update. And as of July 12th, there are no active COVID-19 cases in the town. Um, we've had 571, which is 5.9% of the population, cumulative cases, and this is up three from the last report, which was in June 16th. Uh, relative to vaccinations, as of July 13th, there were 817,033 people in New Hampshire received their first dose of the vaccination, which is 60%, and 747,865, or 55% of the population that was fully vaccinated. Is pretty good. Um, we're now getting information on town specific vaccination rates as of June 23rd. Here's the breakdown for um, New Market, which is, has a population of 9,445. Um, 5,508 have at least one dose, which is 58.3% of the population here. Um, 5,067 are fully vaccinated, which is 53.6% of the population. So again, trending like the rest of the state for the most part. Um, I'd like to remind people that the state sites have closed. However, you can get vaccine, vaccines at a number of places, including right at, at here in town. Um, and if you need more information, you can go to vaccine.gov which is a website put out by the state. Um, changing gears, state budget update. Um, as many of you are aware, the governor signed the state budget into law. And many areas of debate over policy in the bill, um, we wanted to report on the impact to new market. So all of the municipal funding in the Senate adopted version of HB1 and HB2 remained. So uh, that includes 188 million over the biennium in meals and rooms tax distribution through the creation of a new treasury dedicated fund to which 30% of total meals and rooms tax revenue would be deposited for distribution to towns and cities. So parenthetically, um, in the report, you'll notice that that's a $50.5 um, million dollar increase over the current biennium. So, so for example, currently New Market receives $478,702 in meals and room tax. In FY22, we would now anticipate $643,556 or an increase of $164,854. So if this works out as we're anticipating, that could be good for the town. Um, 
Uh, another point is that there's 34.3 million and 35.4 million in fiscal years 2022 and respectively for highway block grants, 2.8 million less uh, than amounts distributed in the current budget. So again, potentially a good thing. Um, and then there's a million for matching grants to local law enforcement agencies to assist with the purchase, maintenance, and replacement of body-worn dashboard camera and dashboard cameras. Uh, and then in addition, the 100 million reduction to the state education property tax remained intact in the budget to be funded by education trust fund reserves. This will reduce all property taxpayers' state education tax amount by 27.5% for fiscal year 2023 only. For comparison, um, based on the, the 2021 statewide education property tax rate of 1.83 per thousand, this would amount to a 50 cent per thousand reduction. And in new market, this would uh, result in a reduction of approximately 56 cents. And that is it. Um, before we um, have any questions or comments, I just wanted to do two things that I forgot to do when we started the meeting. And the first is to close the non-public session. Um, so I would accept a motion to close that session, please. We close the non-public meeting session. Um, second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, if you would call the roll, please. Councilor Grable? Aye. Councilor Craig? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 16. And I would also accept a motion to seal the minutes of the non public session, please. I'll make a motion that we seal the minutes of the non public session. I'll second. Any questions or comments about that? Um, seeing none, if you could call the roll, please. Councilor Gregor? Aye. Councilor Craig? Aye. Councilor Gladstone? Aye. Councilor Conway? Aye. Councilor Sanders? Aye. Councilor Aye. And then I also wanted to mention that um, Councillor Brian Ward is excused this evening. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, so are there any, back to the town manager's report and the department reports, were there any uh, questions or comments about any items in either of those reports? I am seeing none. So I have a few. Um, uh, things that I just kind of wanted to highlight uh, because I do, as I've said in a number of meetings, I think that the department reports are probably the most, one of the most important things of information that we receive um, as counselors and certainly for the community. There's a ton of information about all of the different departments and so I just wanted to make a couple highlights. Um, the first is the police. Um, there's, again, lots of information um, included in the police report, but I wanted to make sure that I highlighted that the governor's LEACT commission, which I'm not exactly sure what the, that acronym is for, has now mandated, mandated 24 hours of annual training for every certified law enforcement officer in the state, which I think everyone can agree is great. Um, previously, the requirement had been eight hours of annual training. so. What that means for our community is um, the extra training is going to require an increase in the training budget along with salaries um, to replace the officers attending training. And it's just important, you know, we get these little pieces of information and, and before long we're going to be in budget season. And so when that comes before the council, it's important to keep that in mind. Um, and then I also wanted to, um, just give a sort of a shout out to Detective Stevens. There was a story in um, the community policing section uh, about his response at the Sleepy Hollow mobile home park. Um, and as it said in the report, Detective Stevens unlikely saved both residences that evening. So um, those are always great stories. Um, and along with that, there was a story in, um, I wrote it down, where is it? in the fire department. Um, oh, I can't find it. Um, I'll get back to that. But um, water and sewer, um, the 
and again, I'm just quoting this directly from the report, the wastewater facility performed unbelievably well during the month of June. The facility discharged an average of 1.8 milligrams no, microgram per liter of total nitrogen for June. Is that what the MG stands for? Microgram? OK. <laughs> um, for fiscal year 2021, the facility discharged 4,080 pounds of total nitrogen to the Lamprey River. That's a 93% reduction from the old wastewater treatment process that would discharge an average of 62,000 pounds of total nitrogen per year. So pretty amazing. Um, and I also wanted to uh, mention um, just a quick note about Channel 13 um, in that in their report in the month of June, uh, Channel 13 covered 13 meetings. And so in addition to the regular meetings, they covered special events in June, including the graduation, the improv show and awards night. And so Tim and Hillary work um, within the confines of the equipment that they have to bring this resource to Newmarket and um, they just always do it with a smile on their faces and so I wanted to make sure that I took a moment to acknowledge them. Um, and in the rec department report, there's, um, it's always filled with so much information and it's, uh, it always puts a smile on my face, but um, uh, two things stood out. Um, Amy Gigande received the NCEP Nicholas Popoff Award this year, which is pretty um, awesome and so well deserved. And the splash pad officially opened yesterday. So um, very, very exciting. And then I also just lastly wanted to mention the welfare report. Um, I had noticed a, a while back that we hadn't received it and I, I think it just sort of slipped my mind and it's been in, in our packets for the last, I don't know, three or four months. And so I just wanted to make sure that I said that I appreciated that it is back in our packets um, because I think that that's a really important uh, report that we received. And I am going to find that piece about the fire department because, um, hang on one second, because I thought. While you're doing that, I'd just like to point out the splash pad and the bathrooms are probably Right. <laughs> I'm not sure which one's more important. Right. <laughs> Very good point. Um, so this was from the New York at the Fire Department monthly report. And it said, the latter also rescued a child from a tree on Beach Street that had attempted to put a baby bird back in a nest and was in, unable to climb back down. And I just thought that was the sweetest thing that I've read in a very, very, very long time and made me think that maybe we're living in a Norman Rockwell painting. So, um, so that's all that I had. Um, Councillor Sanders. Um, the in Amy's report, it mentioned that there will be a, a ribbon cutting for the splash pad. That's actually been put off to a tentative date of August 11th. They have a couple more ADA issues that they need to resolve before they can do the ribbon cutting. And a final date will be announced as soon as Amy has it. Uh, are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, we will move on. And I do have a couple proclamations to read. So um, I will do that now. And the first is a proclamation for um, Teresa Mary Bovere's uh, 100th birthday. And I'm fortunate to present her two years ago with the Boston Cane. Um, as, and that's the award that, or the recipient of the Boston Cane is given, it, the cane is given to the person who is the oldest person in our community. So, um, and she was just incredibly lovely in her home, um, surrounded by her family. It was fantastic and it was a really fantastic afternoon. So I'm excited to, um, to deliver this proclamation. So whereas, Teresa Terry May McGrath Bovere was born on July 27, 1921, and whereas in 1921, the Newmarket selectmen were William J. O'Connor, Ernest T. Hamill, and George A. Bennett, and whereas in 1921, the President of the United States was Warren Harding, and whereas in 1921, a loaf of bread was 12 cents, the average home was $6,187, the price of a car was $310. 
And whereas Teresa Terry Beauvair lives in her home in Newmarket and has resided there for the past 74 years, and whereas Teresa Terry Beauvair worked at Sam Smith Shoe Company and Newmarket Press, all, lo all located in Newmarket, and whereas Teresa Terry Beauvair married her late husband, Norman Beauvair, in 1947, and together they raised three children, Norman, Kathleen, and John. She was blessed with five grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. And whereas Teresa Terry Beauvair is the holder of the Boston Post cane presented to her as the eldest citizen of Newmarket at her home on October 11th, 2019, now therefore let it be resolved the Newmarket Town Council do hereby extend to Teresa Terry Beauvair on July 27th, 2021, her 100th birthday with heartfelt appreciation and gratitude from the town of Newmarket for being a loyal and valuable member of this community. That's sweet. Um, the second proclamation is for um, Mike Hoffman, who we all know is retiring at the end of this month. Um, so whereas after eight years as Newmarket's building safety health and zoning enforcement officer, Mike Hoffman has called it quits. And whereas Mike Hoffman resides in Durham, New Hampshire, but has a interest in the town of Newmarket as a commercial property owner of several buildings in town, as well as the infamous Stone Church. And whereas Mike Hoffman's first question of every workday is how can we make Newmarket a better place? And whereas Mike Hoffman shows up to work every day, smiling, laughing, and spreading good humor, and offering excellent advice to everyone he works with and encounters on a normal work day. And whereas Mike Hoffman shows all building permit applicants and contractors the utmost dignity and respect, which is evident by the praise he constantly receives by many of them. And whereas Mike Hoffman, like Peter Pan, chooses to never grow up and remain our lighthearted, young-minded friend evermore. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Newmarket Town Council does commend and congratulate Michael Mike Hoffman for his outstanding work and dedication to the town of Newmarket, given at the Newmarket Town Council Chambers in Newmarket, New Hampshire, this 21st day of July in the year of our Lord, 2021. Um, and what a pleasure. And um, there is a, a, a retirement party for Mike next Thursday, next Thursday um, at the Oak House, and, and that will be read again. Um, I know he's not here this evening, so um, congratulations. So moving on, um, committee reports. Are there any committee reports? Councilor Sanders. The Arts and Tourism um, Committee had their meeting on Monday, and we're continuing our work on our gift acceptance policy, and we're um, going to be wrapping that up and getting it to Steve and off to legal for review before we, we approve it as a committee. Um, Arts in the Park is going very well. In addition to the bands that are there, we have a table, um, and we are highlighting an artist every week, every week, and also raffling off a piece of art every week. So come and visit us at Arts in the Park. <coughs> We're busy looking for our next project, and our meeting in August will be held. It's open to the public, and we're going to be meeting at 7 o'clock on the third Monday of August at Shanda Park. Several of our members are new to the community, and when we start talking about Shanda Park, Park at Pro Pocket Park, Arbor Park, they're not sure where we're talking about, so we're going to take them on a small tour of the three parks. And we've spoken with Amy Gigande about possibly making Arbor Park our next project, doing a little bit of renovations, maybe saying about um, making a little more space for people as opposed to things that are in Arbor Park. So please join us down there, and that is about it as for now. Councilor Brayback. Um, Conservation Commission met last week. Um, lots of great stuff going on. We had a presentation from the Orient Society on endangered turtles, the work they've done to catch them. Um, an Eagle Scout has um, stepped up to help do work at Heron Point for the next year. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, sorry. Uh, 
some uh, additional signage is going up at Wigan Farm, just reminding folks that, uh, encouraging folks to keep their dogs um, on the trails, um, as well as reminding folks that it is not a space for uh, snowmobiles, bicycles, um, anyone who's kind of not on feet or other accessibility uh, things. Um, and then you'll see on our agenda today, as far as uh, Riverfront Advisory, um, it's in the first reading to re-up the Ad Hoc Reserve Riverfront Advisory Committee. Um, that has lapsed. Um, Steve did give the committee permission to continue meeting in the meantime, but you'll see that's in the first reading, and then we'll have some um, applications from folks to, to stay serving on that committee. But they um, are in the process of buttoning up the grant application, um, which is very exciting. Um, I have a quick question for you. I, I see Councillor Blackstone um, has a report, but before we move on to him, or that question, I guess, we could bring it back to yes. the Conservation Commission. Yes. So something that came up at the Arts in the Park um, last night um, was whether or not there should be signage at the boat launch or in Shanda Park mm -hmm. somewhere about potential bacteria that could be in the water, because there were a lot of kids playing in the water. And there was just a concern that maybe, and I don't know what the bacteria concerns are. I know, I think because of the, the ducks and geese, that was the thought. I don't, I'm just relaying information, so. Yes, I will, <laughs> I will bring that up. Thank you. Um, Councillor Blackstone. So the planning board had a very light meeting um, this time of year, I think. So the, the, the big thing was, um, uh, as you know, a couple of months ago, the building that has cracked skulls was purchased. And um, so they are going to convert the top two floors to uh, four apartments and two studios uh, for six units. Um, and they were looking for waivers because um, if you were to have a building like that now, you would need landscaping, you'd need parking, you'd need uh, water runoff. And so um, we agreed to grandfather them in um, uh, based on the historic downtown uh, renovation. Great. That's it. Thank you. Any other um, committee reports? I know that the um, Energy and Environment Committee did meet, and unfortunately I wasn't able to attend, and so I don't have a report for that committee. So then moving on, we have two resolutions in the second reading. Um, the first is resolution, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to open it. Resolution 2020-2021-52, and it's the Environmental Services Department Truck 2 replacement, and I would accept a motion to approve that resolution. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution 2020-2021-52, um, Environmental Services Department Truck 2 replacement. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. And we have Sean Craig here to uh, talk. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Truck 2, we try and keep our trucks for at least 12 years. Um, in the last couple of years, we take it to and get it looked at to see if it could make it another year. Uh, we've taken and had it looked at, and there's just too much work that needs to be done to it. Um, so we're looking to replace it um, with a similar truck and uh, from uh, the state bid uh, for, of $31,186 for a new truck and 50% of that would be coming out of the uh, water capital reserve and 50% would be coming out of the sewer capital reserve. Right now for vehicles there's uh, 96000 approximately in one and 129000 in the other. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments for Sean Gregg? Nope. Seeing none, if you could call the roll, please. Council Gregg? Aye. Council Baker? Aye. Council Blackstone? Aye. Council Conley? Aye. Council Sanders? Aye. Council Wenske? Aye. Motion passes 7 2. Thank you. Thank you. The next resolution is opening 
Resolution 2020-2021-54, and it's the purchase of two international dump trucks with plow equipment. And I would accept a motion. I'll make a motion to accept Resolution 2020-2021-54, DPW International Dump Trucks Lease Purchase. And we have Rick Milaski here to talk about it. Thank you. These trucks have been in the fleet. They're not new replacements or upgrades, um, just to replace what's currently in the fleet. They're, they're frontline trucks for obviously their biggest thing we use them for is the snow removal. We typically keep them for 12 years. These two trucks we've gotten 16 and 13 out of. Come September, they won't take a sticker anymore. Um, and the repairs to replace the issues is very, very expensive. So. It's been recommended by Auto Excellence. This lease purchase is the same as what we did with the fire truck. It's the same company. Uh, I believe it's what we did with the air packs. It's, it's the same company. And this is just, we, we will be coming every year to ask for this like we did, we will for the fire truck. Um, it's a very similar situation. But uh, these trucks will go out of service in September, which is a little bit of a problem, but there's nothing anyone can do about that. Um, the one thing we probably need to do is keep our trucks for 12 years and we tried to keep them as long as we could and it's it's this time around it's gonna it's gonna hurt a little bit we hope to have them by December um, but there's really nothing we can do at this point um, that's the one thing about keeping them a little extra uh, we had it kind of figured out but we we did get our money's worth out of them for sure for what the element that they're in all the time with the salt out of six months of the year but uh, come in every year if you approve this like to ask if we do this is just for this year um, and then if we didn't approve it they would go back <laughs> but but that's uh, that's it the, hopefully they will be here by December early December is what they're hoping for so I'm not seeing any other um, questions so we'll need to approve the lease every year, but then the, the amount will be rolled into the operating budget. Is that correct or no? Or we approve the amount we, to be removed? Be... It, it, it can come from the operating or the capital reserve. Okay. But typically we, we take it out of the capital reserve. And we'll go into the lease purchase now for everything to try to spread it out and say keep the cost down. Right. Um, so basically every year we'll come in and say, these are the trucks we purchased and it's time for the lease payment again. Um, so we're not necessarily, sorry, this is probably more of a question for Bill than it is, um, but we're not necessarily moving away from the capital reserve program for our purchasing. It's just, it, no. It's the way we're looking at, buy, and we used to buy everything outright, right. and obviously these trucks get more and more expensive, okay. so it's harder to, to do. This kind of spreads it out over a few years, you know, and helps us keep the budget in line and still buy our equipment. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I totally understand that piece of it. That's it's, the It's just thought how part. we're going to, as a yeah, community, as fund that. As far as we'll that's keep my doing the CIP right. and listing the vehicles, it's just the way we finance them. Great. Any other questions? Seeing none, if you could oh, call the roll. Oh, I sorry. have a question. Oh, sorry. Um, so they may not be delivered till December. What happens in the event of an early snowstorm if the other trucks are out of, out of service? We, we do it with what we have. Okay. Um, hopefully, we typically don't see a snow event prior to <laughs> December 1. Typically, we have to go treat usually, okay. but as far as plowing. Okay. Um, we probably shouldn't talk about this, yeah. but uh, <laughs> anyway, we're hoping to have them by the beginning of December. Okay. Um, that's what they're hoping they can do. Okay. Great. While you're up there, I'd just like to congratulate you. The, the uh, splash pad is you know, yeah. working very well. My yeah. two-year-old granddaughter absolutely loves it. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's all tuned up now. We got it tuned in. And it good. Yeah, it came out very well. It was, it was a fun project. Oh, one more. Councillor Cummins. Um, do you have any sense of the um, of the budgetary impact if we had to if 
if we've got to make do, we get an early snow event, we have to make do with kind of, you know, what we have. We're talking just like over time or what's the... Yeah, it'll take longer to do the roots, so mm -hmm. it'll be a little, little bit more over time. Okay. I am last call. I'm seeing <laughs> no other questions or comments, so if you could call the roll, please. Councilor Brayback? Aye. Councilor Paper? Aye. Councilor Blackstone? Aye. Councilor Conway? Aye. Councilor Sanders? Aye. Councilor Weinstein? Aye. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. And, and just real quick, if I could, just I think it's important to know, and people should know this, uh, we finally had weather events for the dam. And the dam's operational now, um, and it's working. It's working amazing. It's a pretty, pretty decent setup that we have now. The engineering they did with that, um, it's all automatic, and it's working really well. Um, I babysit it a lot just to, to keep an eye on it, but it's doing it, everything that it was supposed to do. It was money well spent, and uh, the August fourth, uh, you should all got the invitation. We're going to do a ribbon cutting, not an open house, but a ribbon cutting. Um, and hopefully you can come check it out. But, Great. But it is working really well. Thank you. We couldn't really test it out because the river was so low. <laughs> I know, it's, it's been true. getting tested out really well, and it's, it's really increased the flows down there. Um, it's pretty amazing what that did for, the, for flooding. Yeah. yeah, last night was a pretty spectacular storm. Yeah. Yeah, we've had a lot of rain in two weeks. Uh-huh. Yeah, we noticed. <laughs> yeah. I know I meant to ask Sean um, when he was here because in his report it still talks about the about the the drought and <laughs> I don't know where we're at at this yeah, point, you know. We, we've, we've had, had 11 inches over 11 inches since July 1. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of water. We got 10 inches in May of 2006 and you know what happened. Right? Obviously that was in a week. This has been two and a half weeks, but um, That's an interesting comparison. You know what I yeah. mean? It's been a little spread out mm -hmm. instead of just all in three days. But, but, but it's working really well. If you have a chance to go check it out, it's, it's uh, right now it's almost fully dumped. Cool. But, and right. the other thing with this gate is closed is when it opens to let release water. The opposite of what we, what we used to do. It's kind of hmm. kind of neat. So if, when you when when you want the gate to open, you say close the gate, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and it's anyway, August fourth. August fourth at four o'clock. Four o'clock. Yeah. Yep. And you should all got the invitation, mm -hmm. I believe. If you can make it, check it out. We'll have the vault awesome. open, and the engineers, everybody will oh, be cool. there, all the players. So but it's working well. Thank you. Thanks. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, moving on, we have um, two appointments this evening, and the first is, just pulling it up, is for Peter Nelson, who um, is, uh, the appointment is for the Stratford Regional Planning um, Committee, or Commission, um, Commissioner Appointment. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and this was put forward by the planning board, uh, approved on June 8th, 2021, and I would accept a motion to approve this application. I'll make a motion to approve Peter Nelson for the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. I'll second. Thank you. And, um, Peter's here. I don't know if you had anything that you wanted to say about, I, I know that you've served. If you're gonna, I, I do. If you're gonna speak, just for the microphone. Sorry. Um, the, I, today I delivered. Uh, they had worked on a project called Pathways to Play, um, which connects. Uh, they did a recreational map for the town of Newmarket, which um, I don't know if it's on the website yet, but. They've also mapped all the different recreation sites in all the towns within the Stratford planning region. And today I delivered, they put a nice bro set of brochures and a recreation plan for kids together so that you can go to some of these different recreation sites, scan a QR code and, and get some points and encourage kids to get out and recreate across various communities throughout 
the Stratford Regional Planning Region. So I put those up in the library today. And um, I would just like to let you all know you have a really good, probably one of the better, even if I am on the Executive Committee of the Regional Planning Commission, probably one of the better Regional Planning Commissions in the state, really good team of uh, young, talented planners that's doing a lot of good work. So I think um, uh, the, the, uh, the dues, the member dues, I think New Market, I, I don't know if, I know that comes up like this month, so I just throw that out there too. Keep paying, make sure you pay the dues because we've got a really good <laughs> regional planning commission. So thank you. If anybody has any questions for me, I'm happy to. Are there any answer. questions? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, if you could call the roll, please. Uh, Council Brayden? Aye. Council Craig? Aye. Council Blackstone? Aye. Council Connolly? Aye. Council Sanders? Aye. Council Weinstein? Aye. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. And the next application that we have to approve is for. Thanks, Peter. Um, John Green for the Zoning Board of Adjustment for a term to expire April 2022. And I would accept a motion to approve that application. I'll make a motion to approve the application for John Green for the Zoning Board of Adjustment uh, with a term to expire in April 2022. I'll second. Thank you. And I don't, is John Green here? No. no. Okay. <laughs> um, are there any questions or comments about the application? Seeing none, if you could call the roll, please. Councilor Brayden? Aye. Councilor Baker? Aye. Councilor Blackstone? Aye. Councilor Connolly? Aye. Councilor Sanders? Aye. Councilor Weinstein? Aye. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you. And then we have a bunch of resolutions in the first reading. So um, I hope you all enjoy the sound of my voice. So the first <laughs> one we have is resolution 2021-2022-01, 2021 and it's establishing a Juneteenth holiday. Whereas the Newmarket Town Council maintains the right to modify its personnel policy to affect a more desirable result for eligible employees, and whereas the month of June is the time that many in our nation recognize Juneteenth as the holiday that celebrates Emancipation Day, the day in history when the last state ratified the Emancipation Proclamation, and whereas this date marks the time where African Americans of Texas received notice from President Lincoln that slavery had been abolished, a declaration that was codified in the 13th Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America, and whereas June 19th also marks the day that African Americans in the southern states exercised independence from those who benefited from their labors in the founding of this nation, and whereas the journey of African Americans represents both great achievements and great hardship, and whereas we value diversity and are, uni and are united in our opposition to racism and hate, we stand with our African American residents, employees, and their families. Now, therefore, be it resolved by Newmarket Town Council that the Newmarket Town Council does hereby recognize June 19th as Juneteenth, which shall be a paid holiday for the town of Newmarket employees. First reading, July 21st, 2021. The next item is resolution 2021-2022-02, and it's authorizing the town of Newmarket to enter into a joint powers agreement of Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire. Whereas Community Power authorized under New Hampshire RSA 53E democratizes energy governance by empowering towns, cities and counties to choose where their electricity comes from on behalf of their residents and businesses, work with utilities on local energy infrastructure upgrades, and provide electricity supply rates and services to all customers participating in the program. And whereas the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire is public is a public nonprofit made up of municipalities and counties that procures electric power supply on behalf of residents and businesses and provide related customer services, local programs, net energy, metering supply rates, etc. And whereas 
the Energy and Environment Committee recommends that the Town of Newmarket joins the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire. Now therefore be it resolved by Newmarket Town Council that the Newmarket Town Council hereby authorizes the Town Manager to enter into an intermunicipal agreement known as the Joint Powers Agreement under the provisions of New Hampshire RSA 53A to create the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire for the purpose of supporting member municipalities and counties in developing and implementing electric aggregation plans pursuant to RSA 53E, as well as related statutory authorities. First reading July 21st, 2021. Next we have resolution 2021-2022-03, and it's the change in solid waste fees. Whereas the town of Newmarket has not increased the cost of pay-as-you-throw bags for several years, and whereas while the intent of the pay-as-you-throw system was to offset the cost of solid waste disposal, not, and whereas solid waste costs for the town continue to rise. Now, therefore, be it resolved by Newmarket Town Council that the Newmarket Town Council hereby authorizes the increase in the cost of garbage bags to the following. 33 gallon bags will be $2.50 a bag, which is an increase of 25 cents. 15 gallon bags will be $1.50 a bag, which is an increase of 35 cents. This resolution will take effect October 1st, 2021. First reading, July 21, 2021. the most controversial thing we have done in a long time um, if it passes the next item is resolution 2021 2022-04 um, and I am going to read this in name only um, it's relating to unless there's an objection to that um, it's very lengthy relating to the town's investment policy whereas relating to the town's investment policy. Um, and I will leave it at that because it's five pages. <laughs> um, I don't think anyone may read that. Um, and the next item is resolution 2021 2022-05 and it's the wastewater plant thickener project whereas the sewer department has performed a pilot study that demonstrated by adding a huber thickener to its solids handling process would reduce costs reduce odors and increase solids storage capacity and whereas the project is estimated to have an eight to ten year payback and whereas the Huber equipment cost of $199,172 would be paid for with a seven year lease purchase at a rate of 2.79% from tax exempt leasing corporation, whereas the construction cost of $418,000 will be paid for out of the sewer department capital reserves. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Newmarket Town Council that the town manager is authorized to purchase Huber thickener equipment and enter into any related contracts with Huber Technology and Tax Exempt Leasing Corporation for a lease purchase of seven years for a price of $199,172 at a rate of 2.79 with an annual payment of $31,000. $48. The Town Council authorizes the withdrawal of $418,000 from the Sewer Department Capital Reserves for the construction portion of the Thickener Project. First reading, July 21st, 2021. And the last resolution is resolution 2021-2022-06, reinstating the ad hoc Riverfront Advisory Committee, whereas the Newmarket Town Council has set as one of its goals to improve access to the Lamprey River waterfront, and whereas the town has been notified of a University of New Hampshire capstone project to study waterfront access, and whereas the town council wishes to reinstate the ad hoc Riverfront Advisory Committee 
to review and make recommendations on potential projects. Now therefore let it be resolved by the Newmarket Town Council that the Newmarket Town Council does hereby reinstate the ad hoc Riverfront Advisory Committee to be made up as follows. One member of the Town Council, one member of the Conservation Commission, and three members of the general public. First reading July 21, 2021. And that is all. Uh, <laughs> Was there any correspondence to the town council? I'm assuming none. Um, and then comments by town councilors. Um, Councillor Sanders. It's, it's very pleasing to see the numbers going up for the amount of vaccinated people in the state. Mm -hmm. I would ask that those, those people who have not yet been vaccinated, who are eligible for the vaccine, seriously consider getting those shots in the, in the short term. Thank you. Um, I, hmm. Any other comments? I know there was a, I was looking to see if I could find it. There is a mobile, um, a mobile vaccine clinic that was going to be in Summersworth and I, I can't find it. Somebody posted it on Facebook, and I can't find it right now. Um, in the next day or two, I think, or maybe it's next week. But there are, I think there's going to be a lot of pop up um, opportunities for people to get vaccinated in the coming um, weeks and months. And um, as mentioned from the town manager's report, um, certainly locally people can get vaccinated at Rite Aid. So, uh, seeing no other comments. Um, we, I will consider us to be adjourned. And our next meeting is August 18th, August 18th. So we will see you then.